Welcome to Jesus King of Kings, a place where healing and deliverance miracles happen daily. The truth will set you free. Blessings and welcome. Today, we're going to continue with our teaching of the commandments that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to his disciple. Last week, we spoke as well about the commandments that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to his disciple. If you haven't listened to the prior teachings, I encourage you to listen to it. That's going to be a series that's going to last a few weeks since there are many commandments that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us. And the more clear, the more understanding that we have of them, the easy that it will be for us to do what is right in His eye and for us to keep going, keep walking in the narrow path that leads to eternity that very few find. In John 15, 14, the Word of God says, You are my friends if you do what I commanded you. See here, the Lord says that you are His friend, but there is a but. There is a requirement. What is that requirement for you to be a friend of the Lord? You need to do what He commands. So it is a command of the Lord for us to do what He commands. So, and that is the purpose of these teachings. We want to be friend with the Lord. And in order to be His friend, we need to do what He commands. But in order for us to do what He commands, we first need to learn what He commands. And that is the purpose of these teachings. The purpose of these teachings is learning what are the commandments, what Jesus commands us, His disciples. Because the same commandment that He gave to the first twelve, that He gave to the several hundreds of thousands of disciples that were ready by the time that He ascended, are the same commandments that you and I, if you want to be a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, are the same commandments that we need to be guided to and maintain. Mark 11, 22. Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. That's a commandment. Faith. So we need to have faith in the Lord. We need to have faith in that His promises are faithful, that are true, and that He is mighty and faithful enough to fulfill each one of His promises. We need to walk by faith and not by sight. Luke 12, 5. But I will teach you whom you should fear. Fear him who having killed has power to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. That's a, that is a commandment of the Lord, to fear him. Fear the Lord. We should not fear the power of darkness. We should fear him. If we believe that he is truth, we shall believe that he is righteous. And that he has no part in sin, in iniquity. If we fear Him, if you want to be His friends, we should walk with fear of the Lord. He is love. He is mighty. He, through His signs and wonders, and through His mighty hand, He delivered His chosen nation of Israel from slavery from Egypt. He opened the Red Sea so they walked by foot. Through signs and wonder, He devastated Pharaoh's army. To deliver his people yet after they were delivered when they were in the desert many of them rebel many of them did what was wicked in his eye so he sent serpent to Biden and thousands and thousands of them died because he take no part in sin and it is important to understand that God is love but in another power he is righteous and he will not take them righteous guiltless he made no exception of man nor women. The Lord is love, and He has shown us mercy. But He is faithful, and He may not change. That word is truth. We shall fear Him. He is a commandment for us to fear Him. But we need to walk in fear of the Lord in our pedigree during in our walk here on earth, knowing that even the angels that were in heaven. After they were with him perhaps millions of years, when they rebel, they were cast down to earth. But now they're going to be cast down again into the lake of fire. And anybody who's done not repent, anybody who's done not walk with fear, with godly fear of God, will not enter through the narrow gate. That's why it is narrow 
the path that leads to salvation, but it is wide the path that leads to destruction, and many enter through the wide path. Be fearful of him, so you can be found worthy of entering or entering through the narrow gate. Matthew 4.10 Then Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan, for it is written, You will worship the Lord your God, and him only you will serve. That is a commandment of the Lord. I would think two commandments in one. Worshiping the Lord and serving Him. So we are commanded to serve God. We are commanded to worship Him. If we are true disciples, we must give fruit for the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew 4, 7, Jesus said to him, It is also written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Not tempting the Lord our God is another commandment. We should not tempt the Lord. In Luke 10, 37, I'm only going to re read that verse, but it is good if you guys read the entire uh, the chapter complete. But he speak about, he said, he said, he who showed mercy to him, then Jesus said to him, go and do the same. In that chapter, he speak of the man that, that was hurt, um, was in the street, pretty much dying, wounded. Then a religious person passed by and didn't help him. But then another man passed by and had mercy of him and picked him up and took it to a place to care for him and even offered to pay for, for his expenses. And the Lord is saying that we should do the same like him. In another word, we need to have mercy. We should do what is good. If we see somebody in a need, we should do what we can to help. So we should have mercy. We should help those in need. That is a commandment of the Lord to do righteous deed. Matthew 4, 19. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you featured of men. Following the Lord, it is a commandment. If you want to be his disciple, we must follow him. And if we are true disciple, we follow him and keep his commandment. The outcome, the aftermath, the result of following the Lord in truth is becoming a feature of man. Because when we follow him, when we become his disciple, we're going to be sharing what we learn. So we're going to be saving soul. We're going to become feature of man, feature of soul. John 15, 4 to 12. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine so neither can you unless you remain in me i am the vine you are the branches he who remains in me and i in him bears much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing here the lord is saying abide in me abiding in him is a commandment we are commanded to follow him but abiding in him Keeping with Him, maintaining ourselves in His words, doing those things that you are learning in this church are equally important. Those that choose to follow the Lord are not necessarily those who are going to get the crown of life. Those who follow the Lord and are abiding Him till the end, those will receive the crown of life if they maintain in the truth. John 15 4 to 12. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who remains in me, you abide in me, and my words in you. Ask whatever you want, and it will be done to you. In this is my Father glorified, in that you bear much fruit, and that way you prove that you are my disciple. So here, the Lord says that we can ask whatever we want, but there is some requirement. What is the requirement? We need to abide in Him and His Word to abide in us. If we do our part, if we abide in Him, if His Word abide in us, then He says that we can ask whatever we want and it will be given to us. But there is something else very important that the Lord mentioned here. In this is my Father glorified, 
that we bear much fruit. If we are true his disciple, we must bear fruit. And that giving fruit, it is as in that scripture pretty much called an evidence of being a true disciple. In this is the Father glorified that you bear much fruit. And in this way you prove that you are my disciple. So we are commanded to give fruit. For this reason, every uh, every tree that we are no fruit will be cut and thrown into the fire. So we are commanded to bear fruit for the kingdom of heaven. We are commanded to be featured of men. We are commanded to be constant, to be reliable, to be persistent in doing what we can for the advancement of the kingdom of heaven. Mark 9.35 Sitting down, he calls the twelve and said to them, If anyone wants to be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. We are commanded to serve. Serving is a commandment of the Lord. We need to serve with our time. We need to serve with our skills. We need to serve with our spiritual gift. We need to serve with our finances. If somebody said to love God, but do not do good to those in need, it's not loving Him. If anyone says to love God and spend his day, his time in the TV, watching movie, spend two or three hours in the TV, instead of spending that time sharing a video like this one, seeking people out there who are sick, who are tormented through the social media, and Getting them in contact with one of those videos, like the one that we have in our channel. If somebody says to love God, but it's working, and support not the needed, need to support the work of God, that person really does not love Him. All of those that do as such, as I have described, the word that says, these people with their mouths, they love me, but their heart is away from me. That scripture feed everybody who live a life like this. The good news is that each one of you, that you do not do what is good to the needed. You do not support the kingdom of heaven. You do not serve God with your time. You have the opportunity to repent. And everybody who repent and come away from sin, find mercy. Matthew 7, 12. Therefore, whatever you want me, men, to do to you, do also to them. Because this is the law and the prophet. So we are commanded to do to order as we want them to do to us. And if we comply, if we keep that commandment, we save ourselves from much trouble. Because by doing that, that automatically makes us overcome selfishness. Because we are not thinking only about ourselves. We are thinking what the brother need, what the sister need. What would I like them to do for me? Or what I would, how I would be pleased? What would please me of them? Then if we, instead of waiting for them to do it for us, we do it for them. That scripture itself will cleanse many from many different sins by learning how to think in other as much as thinking in oneself. Matthew 7 15 be aware of false prophets who come to you in cheap clothing but inwardly they are ravenous wolf to keep away to be aware to protect ourselves to not accept to not receive very much the false prophet is a commandment of the Lord we need to separate from them for that reason regularly I share the importance of being watchful and separated from those that have a different doctrines because in the physical they, are, they look very holy but in the spirit they are ravenous wolf they slaughter you from within so it's a commandment of God for us to be watchful and away from them Matthew 7 6 do not keep what is holy to the dog, and do not throw your pearls before swine, lest they temple 
trample them underfoot and turn and tear you to pieces. We are commanded by the Lord not to give what is holy to the dogs or to the pigs. If you read the first few verses in Matthew 7, he speaks about how we need to pluck the beans of our own eye before so we can see. So he's speaking pretty much about prayer. He's speaking about serving. He's speaking about pretty much healing and deliverance. He's speaking about using the authority, the power that the Lord has given us. It's a commandment of God for us not to pray just for everyone. We are commanded and not to take the food of the children just to give it to the to the strangers. In that area, really, I know that I'm going an extra mile. I barely reject anybody from prayers. I pretty much pray for anybody who come here. And I'm doing so for the guidance of the Lord. But truly, years ago, the Lord, the Lord, um, I received a molestation from the Lord with that scripture. Because I used to do the same that I was doing now. Um, some things that happened, the Lord showed me what I was, I was doing wrong. In, in, in praying just for everybody, I was doing wrong. Uh, but the, then afterwards, the Lord comforted me. And that's the reason why I keep doing it. There is one reason why I keep praying just for everybody that comes in here. And it is for the advancement of the kingdom of heaven. I'm having much grace with everybody just because I want mo as many people as safe as possible. But truly is that the time of God's servant like, like me is holy. And we are not commanded to give what is holy to the pig or to the dogs. And unto God, anyone who not fully repent, anyone who is not truly ready to walk away from sin to serve the true and living God, anyone who hardened their heart and are not supposed to pray for them, and I still not complying with that commandment for a little while, but in time, as every other commandment, it will be so. In time, I will not pray for those that do not show true intention of repentance. It is unfair to take the food of the kid to give it to the dogs and anybody who does not repent spiritually is considered a dog and a pig. Matthew 10, 9 to 12. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. And already in the house, the disciple asked him again about this. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife, and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband, and marries another, she commits adultery. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. A true marriage is not unto man, unto man is unto God. The true union that takes place when a woman and a man choose to unite, the true union is not done by a man, it's done by God. And what God has joined together, let no man separate it. No separation, no divorce, that is a commandment of the Lord. There are other commandments in that area that are in time, I will speak about it. Luke 12, 15. And he said to them, Be vigilant and be aware of every form of covetousness. Because even when someone has abundance, his life does not consist in his goods. This is a commandment of the Lord. Ourselves to keep our guard off, to be vigilant that we don't become covetous, that we do not let the devil deceive our heart after riches after possession, we should be aware, we should be watchful, in not to be all about buying things, about just getting stuff that we do not even need. We need to be watchful. We need to make sure that our priority is serving the Lord. We need to make sure that we don't fall into the deceitfulness of riches. There are many warnings in the Bible about riches. Like the young man, that he was very rich. And he came to the Lord. He confessed that he was keeping the commandments since a child. 
But the Lord said to him, Do you want to be perfected? Sell all that you have and follow me. But he, he couldn't do that because he was very rich. And the Lord responded to him, It is easier for a camel to go through the eyes of a needle than to a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Certainly, we need some things to survive. We need some things to live. But riches should never be our priority. Our priority must be serving the Lord. And truly is that unless those riches are given to us because it's God's will, becoming rich is almost a ticket into the lake of fire. Because the Bible is truth and every word is truth. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than to a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Another scripture I speak about Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus used to eat of what was falling from the rich man. But then the rich man ended in the lake of fire and Lazarus being comforted. Another scripture says, Poor you now that are rich, and blessed of you now that are poor. Other scripture mentioned and said and command to make for ourselves rich and on heaven, not on earth. So we are very warm in the area of finances, not to let our heart be deceived for riches. So we need to be vigilant. We need to make sure that the law our God is only on our first priority. When the blessings are coming for the Lord, it is easy to tell. Because if really the blessings are coming for the Lord, even the riches that we receive are going to be used for the Lord. But if we receive riches, and that riches is used for selfish desire, it's just thinking about just becoming more rich, and to buying plane, and to buying car, and to buying stuff of the world, there is a great, but a great, but a great possibility that that is not a real blessing. That is pretty much a curse. That that blessing is not coming from God, but it's coming from the enemy. The enemy also give money. He even pay money to people and a lot of money. The enemy go very far in order to get a soul. Because it's your soul. The soul of any one of you, it is priceless. The soul of any one of you is priceless. So we need to be aware and guard ourselves of covetousness, of love of money, of greed. I pray and I hope that you have been blessed with this Bible teaching today. And if you have been blessed with this Bible teaching, I ask you to please give it a thumbs up to the video and share it. And thank you for being with us. You can be caught a part of something great of what the Lord is doing here by supporting this church, by supporting this ministry, by sharing this video, and also with your offering and finances. You can help us keep advancing the kingdom of heaven. God bless you, and thank you for being with us.